Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy. On Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. Welcome to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, Visibility Catalyst and best-selling publisher. And today we're talking about something I believe many of us at one time or another has dreamed of, and that's nomadic living, right? Living and um, traveling and, you know, following your heart's passion and that sense of freedom that I think we all yearn for. I'm raising my hand here. So have you ever found yourself wondering what nomadic living is like? Together with her boyfriend and dog, Tara Sage lives full-time in an RV, living and working from the road, salsa dancing, exploring and traveling at their own pace. And today you'll learn why and how Tara chose this lifestyle and how you can too live more boundlessly and create a life and business that you don't need a vacation from. Tara Sage Steves is a life and business master coach, speaker, author, entrepreneur, human potential activator, sassy salsa dancer, nomad, RVer, strategic thinker, and the queen of possibility. She's passionate about serving those who aspire to explore, follow their inspiration, satisfy wanderlust for travel, and do it all with a mission-driven eagerness to take life and work to the next level while living in a way that you don't need a vacation from. Welcome, Tara. Hi, thank you, Linda. It's such a pleasure to be here and connected with you and all of our listeners. Well, you and I go back a long time, you we know. Do. Yeah, so we met back when Aspire first started, and I've watched your journey and your passion for getting women and, and men to to like create the life they love, to follow their dreams. So it's been such a joy for me as a friend to watch you unfold and inspire so many others, you know, to do the same, to follow their dreams. Likewise. I know we're such kindred spirits. I remember feeling and knowing that from day one. <laughs> well, I remember having sure. you to the house and just sitting on the patio talking about yeah. the visions for the future, and I love seeing what you've created. Thank you. Likewise. So how did you become not only the creator of Tara Sage Coaching, but how, living and working from the road full-time in an RV, This, which I love the picture, so thank you for sharing them. Um, yeah, so it has absolutely been an evolution. Um, as you shared, I started my coaching business way back. It was 2004. And I've had the joy of serving thousands of people over the years, clients across the United States and also internationally. And, and I was able to do this because by design, I created my business to be location independent from the get-go. And I did that because I have always uh, identified myself as having a nomadic soul. I have always known myself to be a citizen of the world and really felt that in my heart. And so a dream that I've always carried in my heart has been to have total freedom to travel when and where I please. And I've done some travel over the years. I've been to Europe, I've been to Australia, I've been to Mexico, Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, to name a few places I've had the joy of going to. And I've also traveled some across the United States. But the thing about it is it was really infrequent. Um, I owned property or I had lease agreements. I had commitments that had me 
really feeling like as much as I wanted to be free to travel, I was rooted and travel was becoming more and more infrequent. Um, and I really had to notice that. And I know a lot of people can relate to that desire and yet feeling like it's not an easy thing to actually implement. So I wrote this um, in my article that I have in Aspire magazine, the wonderful Aspire magazine, that um, despite having a location independent company in theory, um, I recognized I really wasn't taking full advantage of that because as much as I love to travel, I, I also really love sleeping in my own bed and I also really love the comforts of home. And I really don't like living out of a suitcase for very long. Um, there's this quote by Gloria Steinem. She said, uh, birds need a nest, and yet they still fly. And I so love oh, that. That's beautiful. And, yeah, it is beautiful. And I wanted to figure out how I, too, could have a nest and still fly. And one day it hit me, Linda. I, was, I thought an RV. I decided not to renew our lease. Uh, we lived in D.C. area at the time, and, and we decided to do it. And it was something that neither one of us had ever done before. The first night we slept in our RV was the first night either one of us had ever slept in an RV. And we owned it, and we were in it for full time. So it was a total whirlwind. It was a total experiment. And we had a really steep learning curve, but we did it. And now it's six months or so later, and we see no end in sight to this nomadic lifestyle for us. It's so, so beautiful. And the pictures, um, how big is the RV? Um, it's 20 feet, a 20-foot home. <laughs> and it's adorable. I've seen the pictures. It's adorable. And, and it's the three of you because you have your pet with you, too. Yes, Cosmo, Cosmo, our dog Cosmo. Oh my goodness, we just recently put a custom sticker on the side of our RV. I it saw that. Fun. Yeah, it came with a frog and a canoe. That's the the brand sticker that we bought, and we replaced that sticker with one that has a little Boston Terrier in a canoe. <laughs> it was adorable. I saw it, and and what I loved following you. Um, when I can, I'm following your journey because you, you shoot videos and everything about your journey and your travels and inspiring others. Mm-hmm. Tell us, what, tell the listeners, what are some of the greatest lessons or insights you've learned um, about this lifestyle? Yeah, well, there are so many. Um, simplicity is, is really the key that I would share is what I call the paradox of less, uh, that it really is more. It's opened up so much mental uh, space for me to clear not only physical clutter, but mental clutter to really just focus in on what's most important to me. So I would say that's the biggest lesson learned is how little we need, um, zeroing in on what your true priorities are, and then going for it because there's no reason to wait. Uh, there's some days, not a day of the week say that a lot, but it's true. So if you want something, figure out how to make it happen. Now, there's a way. If there's a desire in your heart, there's a way to make it happen. I absolutely believe that and know that to be true. I'm with you on that. I mean, you, like I said, you and I have known each other a long time, and I just stay focused on the vision of how I want my life to be. And then, you know, the divine and inspired action take care of the rest. But I believe everything is possible, just as you teach um, your clients. Um, yeah. One of the things that I've noticed is, um, in watching your videos, is there's a whole tribe of individuals out there that you're meeting across the country as you travel who yes. maybe in RV parks, but they're not living the nomadic lifestyle, right? Maybe it's a vacation and you're meeting them. Do you feel like the conversations you have with them, they're like, oh, my God, it is possible. I could do this year round. Oh, yes. The number of times we have heard, and I quote, did you win the lotto? <laughs> because people have the impression that you need to be, you know, a gajillionaire to uh, go and live this lifestyle. And it's 
so not the truth at all. So, yeah, we hear, you know, so jealous. We hear that a lot. Um, And I don't want people to be jealous. Let me say that. Like, envy is not a good emotion. I don't want to elicit that. But I do want to inspire people to know that they, too, can do this, that you don't need to win the lotto, that I haven't won the lotto, that I'm not a gajillionaire, and you don't need to be. Um, this is all doable and you don't have to be in a state of envy. If you truly want it, you can make this happen for yourself too. There's so many changes happening in the world to support it. Exactly. And when we come back from the break, I want to talk about that, talk about the changes that you see happening in the world and how do you, would you encourage people to consider the opportunities this lifestyle brings? And I will be back in a moment with Tara Sage Steves of NomadicLiving101.com. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Inspiration for a woman's soul. Aspire Magazine. Inspiring and supporting women on the path of self-discovery. Claim your free digital subscription today, which includes access to thousands of dollars of personal development bonus gifts from Team Inspiration Partners. Claim your Aspire Magazine subscription today at subscribetoaspire.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.omtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is OTRFM. Part of the IOM Radio Network. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I am your host, Linda Joy, and with me today is a dear friend, Tara Sage Steves, who is a life and business master coach, speaker, author, and all around extraordinary woman. And along with nomadicliving101.com, you can also learn more at tarasagecoaching.com. So, Tara, right before the break, you mentioned that with the changes happening in the world, that nomadic living is something that we could all consider. What led you to those thoughts? Yeah, so I really want to encourage people to consider the opportunities that the changes in the world are really bringing. If you know, you have an inkling in your heart for this kind of lifestyle. So there are so many factors that I see at play right now. Um, One is that the world is getting smaller in the sense that technology connects us in ways that it never did before. Um, Computers are so integral to how we get work done. And more and more employers... I'm obviously my own employer, but more and more employers are realizing the benefits of having remote employees. And statistics are showing that work gets done more efficiently when people work from home. Employee retention rates go up because employees are happier not having to commute to an office every day. 
And employers are also able to cut costs by not having to supply every worker with an office and all the overhead costs of that. So I think that we're seeing a trend. The, the landscape of how we work is changing, and I believe it's going to continue to go in this direction as much as is possible. Now, to add to that, I believe the definition of home is changing as well. The days of having all your friends and family in the same town or city is becoming maybe even obsolete. It's very rare, very rare that that's the case. So if home is where the heart is, as is often said, and family and friends span across the country, even across the globe, then where's home? And that was the dilemma for me because I have friends and family across the world. So that's on the heart level that I think our definition of home is expanding and we're wanting to have more mobility for many reasons. And then, gosh, I could talk about this all day, but on the practical level, um, a 30-year mortgage and being rooted in one place and investing the bulk of your dollars into housing costs all to stay in one place, I think is becoming less attractive to a lot of folks. So we've got Airbnb and Zipcar and Facebook and all the GPS technology that is all making it easier than ever to have home be defined by more than one place, perhaps. And so nomadic living or sometimes what I call seasonal living, depending on how long you're in one place, or quarterly living, um, is becoming a really attractive and feasible possibility for more and more people. That's what I see. Oh, I, I see it too. And just think of the world you and I are blessed to be able to serve, right? We both have virtual businesses. And the best thing I ever did was leave the print industry to go virtual because now, like you, as long as I have a phone and my laptop, I have so much more freedom. And Dana and I have really taken advantage of that, like going to Costa Rica, which is our favorite place, for three weeks at a time and and really enjoying it. And now as we're right-sizing, so we're, we're going, we're making changes in our life like you did. Like, we want less. Um, we have this big home that we no longer need. The children are gone. So we're right-sizing. We're also planning, like you, we're going to test it. See, you dove you dove right in. Like, I'm going to buy an RV, mm-hmm. and we're going to sleep in it for the first time after we've made the decision. We're yeah, going to test the waters. Style. <laughs> uh, that, I know, and that's what I love about you. So we're going to test it um, as soon as the new house is built. So I think it will be 2020. I don't think it will be next year. We're mapping out what we want to do, and our goal is minimum three months in an RV, um, no agenda, um, possibly six months, it depends. And so we're putting all these things in place, Tara, so we can do that. So for some of those living the nomadic lifestyle, do they break it down? Did, do some people test it first, or have you met friends that dove fully into it like you did? Oh, no, I'm a rare bird in that regard. And let me say, too, that um, Carl and I, my boyfriend and I, we we dove in, but we dove in with an agreement that this was an experiment. And you you can undo a decision, right? So no decision is final, and we recognize that, that making this decision to embark on this lifestyle didn't mean it had to be forever. But we dove in to get the full experience of it, knowing full well, like, say, in three months, if we don't like it or if this really isn't working for us, um, then we can sell the RV and get an apartment. I mean, it's not hard to go back to more of a status quo way of life, right? That's, That's really not that hard. It's not hard to, you know, go on Craigslist or buy a new couch and, like, just put the pieces back together. That can be done. Um, so we went into it as an experiment and yes, we meet both. If, if it's a family, both would have to be unless someone's traveling back and forth. Right. So he is an employee. He is a full-time IT employee. 
and most of his work he can do remotely. Oh, that's so wonderful. He, you know, he negotiated with his boss to figure out a way to make this work, and he does return every few months and show his face in the office and do it, you know, that piece, um, but most of his work can be done remotely. And so I would say to folks who are employees that think, oh, well, I can't do it because I don't have that kind of freedom, I would say open up to the possibility that there's ways to negotiate that with your employer. Because again, more and more employers are understanding the benefits of having remote workers and they benefit as you do. Um, if they want to hold you on their team, they're probably going to work with you on that and come up with some strategies to make it work. So um, there are ways. There are ways. And that's wonderful. And so I know that for me, because I've always considered myself a free spirit, what have you discovered happens when someone is feeling this pull for expansion, but they don't honor their you know, nomadic heart and soul and go after that feeling of boundless living, what do you feel happens energetically, spiritually, across all realms? Yeah. This one might make me weep um, because I believe it's a really incredibly high cost to that nomadic heart and soul, that expansive desire for more boundless living if it's ignored, if it's shut down. So if you're feeling confined or contained or even worse, the sense of feeling trapped in your routines, in your lifestyle, in your to-dos, um, in the expectations of others, like maybe you're working really long hours to pay for a home that you're rarely in, um, having really very little time for yourself, then I would say the cost is way too high. And it's, it's time to, you know, have a look at that, an honest look at that. Um, it comes down to living what I, I'm sure you've heard referred to as a default life instead of your dream life. Um, it really... It means living for later and living for someday with maybe hopes of retirement being a time when you could do it or, you know, whatever the milestone people set up in their mind, like, okay, when this debt is paid off, then I'll do it. Or when, you know, my child is done with high school or whatever it is, there's ways, there's world schooling, like there's, I've met people with kids on the road who are full-time even. So it's all about honoring, first of all, your boundless heart. And um, again, that someday is not a day of the week, so figuring out a way to do it now. Um, there's a 62-year-old woman that I connected with earlier this week, Linda, um, and she said to me, Tara, I want my someday. Whoa. And I instantly was, yeah. 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 Tears are just streaming down my face, and it does it to me every time because I want her someday for her, too. Exactly. And, and I but, want her and everyone with this longing in their heart to not be waiting for someday um, yeah. and to live their boundless life, live it now. So. Yeah, and everyone's definition of that may be different, but it's following this yes. expansive feeling so you can... Um, you know, experience life of joy, not what you called um, default life. I I always refer to as living on autopilot. Get up, yeah. do the same thing every day, put your dreams and desires aside. And it's almost like we become robotic in our lives because we don't want to rock the boat. And our soul is saying, wait, rock the damn boat. You know, please rock the damn boat. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, so even for me, my company culture is we we have been closed on Fridays. My offices, my team are off on Fridays for the last four years. Um, I want freedom. I want lightness. And like you said, um, when you have, it's a little thing, taking Fridays off, right, or for my team to have Fridays off, but the benefit is showing them, listen, um, you can have the life you want and feel expansive, you don't have to give up everything. Yeah. And, and that's your message is like, f 
follow your, I call them soul whispers. Follow your soul whispers. Listen to your heart. So when we come back from our next break, I want to talk about what you recommend for someone who's curious about nomadic living, but is like, oh, what do I do? I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> and I'm sure there's women in the audience listening right now who are raising their hand because they're like, oh, my God, somebody is actually doing what I've always dreamed of doing. Let me pick her brain. So we'll be back in a moment. Uh, with me today is Tara Sage Steves of NomadicLiving101.com. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Own Times Radio. IOM FM. Experience a homecoming to your heart. In the foreword of Dr. Deborah Rebel's new book, Being Love, how loving yourself creates ripples of transformation in your relationships and the world, Marcy Shimoff shares, the answer to our inner longing isn't finding love, it's being love. The practices that Dr. Deborah presents in Being Love are keys to opening your heart and receiving your divine birthright as a physical manifestation of love. Her techniques developed over years of successful private practice with her clients and from her extensive training in multiple disciplines are accessible, compassionate, and effective. Her message is powerful, and if you allow it, will change your whole life. Order your copy of Being Love today at beinglovebook.com and receive over 45 transformational gifts. Being Love is brought to you by Inspired Living Publishing. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. You're listening to Inspired Conversations. I'm your host, Linda Joy, and today we're talking about nomadic living with Tara Sage Steve. All right, Tara, well, come on, let's get into this. What do you recommend for someone who's curious about this style of living but is feeling really stuck and wondering if, if it's only for you and not for them? Yeah, great question. So... If you're listening and you are believing that you can't live it, um, then that's first, in my opinion, is is getting support in shifting that limiting belief. That's a good place to start. Does that make sense? Exactly. You have to start from the inside out. Yeah, exactly. So that's first, is getting support and shifting any limiting belief that's telling you that you can't do it um, and shifting to, I can, I just may not see how yet. Um, that's a great next step in terms of the inner dialogue. So um, support with that if needed. And then, you know, I got to say, I really, in a very firsthand way, I understand that it can feel really daunting to embark on a big lifestyle change like this. It certainly was for me. The process was very daunting. 
Um, downsizing alone can be a beast of a project. Um, so I would say start with that in the sense of start with cleaning out one drawer and st- then one shelf in little little slices of time that you devote to this. Now, whether you go nomadic or not, it's going to feel so good to have less clutter and less stuff that you don't need. So either way you win. So that's one thing you can do is begin to prepare in that way by having less of what you don't need and and really focusing on traveling light in your own way, whatever that means to you now. And then I'd also say, as you alluded to earlier, Linda, open up to part-time possibilities. So ask yourself questions like, how can I live nomadically for a month? Or if you're feeling really confident about a month and wanting to go further with it, how can I live nomadically for a season? And ask the question and start exploring the possibilities of what that might look like. Where would you want to go? Could you perhaps rent out your home while you're away or do a house swap of some kind? The key is to trust that if the desire is in your heart, there's a way. I, 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 there's a repeated message here, right? I believe we live in a universe of possibility and that a desire would not be felt if the universe couldn't provide it. So trust that it's possible and then ask, how can I? And open up to let the answers be revealed to you. Just a question. When you start any question, especially in your journal, how can I? It's filled with possibility. Yes. Right? It's filled with possibility. Yeah. yeah. And then you, you, your imagination can feed it. And then you, I, I found that when I start a question like that in my journal, that I drop down from my head into my heart, a soul, and... And that's where the response starts to come from because I've dropped out of my ego fear head and I've dropped into my, you know, my possibility, place of possibility. And so I I love that you said to, you know, start there. I have a question too. So nomadic living doesn't, if I'm understanding correctly, doesn't necessarily mean it has to be an RV. Like we, we have friends that are gone for four months every winter, so I guess it'd be seasonal, right? And they pick different places and they go to get the heck out of the New England winter. Would that still be considered nomadic living even if they're not in an RV? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I just in wanted fact, to clarify. Yes. Oh, yeah. Airbnbs, um, yachts. There are people who live on boats for seasons or months at a time. Um, RV is just one option for nomadic living, for sure. And then there's, of course, overseas and all kinds of possibilities. So, for I, sure. So, it, so the just hearing that that tells you the possibilities are endless. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, they are. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? I, that's that's the part is like yes. Now, do you have? In all the travels that you've already done over what it's been about yeah. six months, right? You yeah. me, you mentioned that you've met families that are they must be homeschooling, right? So I, you're finding more and more uh, people are starting to do this as a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it used to be just retirees, and now we've met um, people younger than us. We're we're in our early forties. Um, and yeah, in their twenties, even with uh, innovative virtual businesses who are traveling and working from the road, um, or young families as well. We met the most extraordinary nine-year-old I have ever met in my life um, on the road. She was a world schooler, and her mom happened to be a teacher before they left for their journey on the road. So mom was their teacher and the world was their school. And um, she was the most articulate, interesting, poised, confident nine-year-old I've ever met. So there is something happening with um, new ways of schooling as well that I think are really intriguing. I love it because a lot of us were raised, depending on what generation, to believe 
um, and I'm 55, that you get a job, you stay there until you die. Make sure you get all your benefits, but you you stay in this zone, and that's what my family always believed. You know, you get a job right out of high school, you stay there, you make a career of it, and then you retire. Well, we, you and I know that there's no joy in that, and I'm not saying that there, aren't, there aren't some people that find joy in that, but for me, I've never fit into that box. I want to experience new things. And the beautiful part is that woman that you met that is raising the nine-year-old that way, Mm -hmm. look at the expansiveness that child is growing up with. She's being taught to believe in the power of possibilities. So imagine what kind of life she's going to create for herself. Yeah, I got chills as you said that. I, I could only imagine. I mean... Instead of, you know... Wait and us. see. It's exciting. Exactly. So mm-hmm. what is one concrete tip that people can be doing right away to put them on the path to living more boundlessly? To living... I, I'm sorry, I lost the last word. To living more boundlessly. Oh, yeah. Um, ex- excellent. So I actually have two I'd like to share if that's okay. <laughs> um, one is on a practical level. The other is more energetic. Um, so I'll start with a practical tip. When something to consider is that most people's biggest monthly expense is their rent or their mortgage payment. And this was definitely true for me. And if you recognize that this is true for you too, then I, I know firsthand that there's an opportunity to get creative and find strategies to lower this expense um, and opening up to those new possibilities. I even heard a possibility recently from someone who said, you know, you could buy a boat. She's a boat person. She said, you could buy a boat that isn't, doesn't even run. And you could pay for a, a docking fee, and that's your only rent. And people will practically give away a boat that doesn't run. And you could live in the boat at now the dock that's with a beautiful view. Right? So that's creative thinking. So start to see, like, how could I do this? And recognize that if you shift that biggest monthly expense, uh, you you will have new options of how you can use your resources. So if your income remained the same, but you didn't have the rent or mortgage payment, um, what would that open up for you? How would you want to use your resources in a new way, perhaps? Um, Or you might decide that if your expenses are lower, that you could um, work less and then free up more time freedom. So I, I would say look at that one piece and examine it for how can I um, lower this one expense to shift and create more financial freedom for yourself. And, and then there's... That's a big um, one because a lot yeah, of people go ahead. feel trapped and they really don't yeah. have to. There are options, but you have to use your creativity and tap into the power of possibility to see them instead of just focusing on what is. Yes, absolutely. And if nothing else, I hope this... Um, radio show, you know, cuts through some of the myths, like people think boating is so expensive, and it can be, but there is an example of a boating strategy where you could literally live right on the water and um, do it for a very low cost. So that's one example of thinking outside the box. Um, So the energetic piece is what I've come to refer to as the paradox of less, and I mentioned this a little bit earlier, that life can be so much simpler then most of us make it. And the paradox of less has been one of the most stunning revelations of my RV living experience. Um, simplifying, paring down, and clearing the oodles of mental and physical clutter from my life has really allowed me to expand my focus, zero in on my truest priorities, and embark on some of my biggest, boldest dreams. It's been a total game changer, and there's a lot in the works on that right now, um, and I really credit it to the paradox of less. So my tip would be to determine how and where you are complicating what could be simpler and where you can let go of stuff or perhaps just the striving for more stuff 
and as a result, create more freedom and more mental and emotional space to invest that energy and your resources into what's truly important to you. That is beautiful, and I love that, the paradox of less. And when we come back, I want to talk about that a little more because I'm going through it, as you discussed prior to getting on the air, is we're right-sizing. So what have I been doing and what I will be doing all weekend is going through the stuff of looking at it and saying, does this make my soul sing? And the stuff I have yeah. released is that over the last month is like, oh, my God, I can't believe I kept this for 18 years. You know, the question's coming. <laughs> and it yeah. felt so amazing and freeing. So let's talk about that more when we come back from our last break. Great. I'll be back in a moment with Tara Sage Thieves of NomadicLiving101.com. Make sure you swing by her site to learn more. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. What if you could live the life of your dreams, the life that you came here to live? What if you were able to honor your gifts and passions, turn them into a heart-centered business, and make a big difference in the world, all while living authentically and doing the work you love? It is possible. Patricia Young, president and founder of InnerProsperityAcademy.com, knows that awakening to your own truth, aligning with your life purpose, and having your own business is one of the most exciting and courageous things you will ever do in your life. Patricia helps spiritual, sensitive, and growth-oriented women start, grow, or transition into a business they love so they can go from working for a paycheck to working for a mission. For supportive resources, programs, and more to help you do just that, visit InnerProsperityAcademy.com. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Welcome back. You're listening to Inspired Conversation. So, you mentioned the paradox of less. And so many of us, I, I believe, I know many of the women in my circle, you know, I have a lot of feng shui people and clutter clearing people and certified soul coaches. And so I have a lot of stuff come through Aspire all about clutter clearing, um, releasing the old to make room for the new is the mm-hmm. paradox of less, is it in that same energy and vibration? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I boil it down to this. When I would go through my, my downsizing process, um, I would hold something in my hand and say, do I need it? Do I love it? And if I could not answer a resounding yes to one or both of those questions, then it, it had to go. I love it that. was as simple as that. Very yeah. similar to and what I'm so, doing. I have to, I want to yeah. feel it. Like if, if it doesn't yeah. make my soul sing, is it just something? And here's the other thing that I found myself at when you clean right now a big house is uh-huh. if it's been in the box already for two years in a closet, can it really have any emotional value? So why even open that box to look at whatever is in that box that you haven't seen in two years? Because yeah, if there was emotional so, value, I, it wouldn't be in a box in a closet. 
Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, I actually kept some of the things that were in the box that I hadn't opened. Um, things like yearbooks or um, photographs that I had from travels in the past or from college and things like that. So I actually sorted through all of that. But in that, that box, I also found journals. Oh my gosh, I am a writer. <laughs> I found so many journals from my childhood through, you know, my 20s and 30s. And I'll tell you, the, all of those I, I destroyed. I just said, I don't need any of these stories and dramas anymore. And I actually had a fire uh, ritual around letting go of my journals and my stories. So that was really powerful. But some of the things that are irreplaceable, like photographs from, you know, childhood memories and things I did keep, and those are being stored um, that, I, at a, that, that was my next in a question. drawer. Yeah. Because with a 20-footer, yeah. mm -hmm. you could only choose to take, even though you kept all those memories, you could only choose to take so much actually with you. So they're stored. Yes. All your other stuff is stored, and you had to pick and choose what could fit in the RV, what what you yeah. needed. I remember thinking, I think I saw, did you keep the French press coffee maker? Was that? Oh, my gosh, yes. I have yeah, a I was like, coffee oh my maker in the, in the RV, for sure. Yes, I have only the best of everything in the RV. It's so great. Um, but, yes, my storage unit is this. Um, it's, so I have a family heirloom. Um, my grandmother's teak, beautiful desk that she used to write all her thank you cards and Christmas cards at. Um, and I'm so honored to have, you know, inherited that. And so that is a precious uh, possession that I can't replace. That's irreplaceable. So that desk is actually at my cousin's house in a beautiful spot in her living room. And the drawers of that desk are my storage unit. So the, um, pictures that I was referring to earlier, the things that I'm keeping are in the drawers of my grandmother's desk, which is being housed at my cousin's house. And, you know, they're enjoying that beautiful heirloom for now. So okay. that's it. I don't have anything else in a storage unit. Wow. So you really downsized. I really did it. You did. So how are the two of you adjusting? And I know a lot of people might be wondering this question. How are the two of you as a couple adjusting to living in small quarters? It's not like you can say, honey, I'm going to the next room. I'm getting out of here. What do you do for your <laughs> space? <laughs> so you actually can um, if you need to. So that you can't go to the next room, so to speak, but we, you know, we spend time apart. Um, we can go and work at different places, cafes, a local library, um, being outside, you know, a picnic table has been my office many times. Um, so we're really good about that. You know, we find our space if and when we want and need it, but I have to be honest, um, you know, we're really thriving together and we really enjoy each other's company and, um, it's, it's, you know, a, a powerful team. We make a powerful team and it's just been an awesome experience. So something I say, you know, because people do ask that a lot, like, how do you guys spend all that time together and not drive each other crazy? Um, and I say this from experience, you know, having a bigger house, if you aren't getting along with your partner doesn't solve the problem. So, um, in a lot of ways we, we can't hide from each other and that's been a benefit and, you know, we can't hide from ourselves either. So it's, it's working for us. It's working for us. And, um, you know, if you're not wanting to live in a space with someone, then it doesn't matter how big the space is. I, I think Oh, so true. Yeah. If anything, it will magnify, mm. if there are issues, it will magnify them. Exactly, exactly. That's what I mean when I say we can't hide from each other, you know. If something's up, we handle it, and then it's it's complete. So. I love it. And in that last few yep. moment, minutes, um, Tara, if people want to know more about how to take this work further with you, what do they need to do? Yeah, so um, I so welcome the opportunity to connect with those listening uh, on a one-to-one -one basis. 
if that speaks to you and really explore possibilities together. I offer a complimentary session. Um, if you're interested in that, you can go to sessionwithtara.com and schedule that session right there. Super easy. My gift to you. I just love connecting with people and, and we see if there's a way I can serve you beyond that. Um, I also invite folks to check out two resources. Um, one is, as you mentioned earlier, nomadicliving101.com. And that's for those who want to live nomadically, be it a month, a season, a year, or forever, but really aren't sure how to go about making it happen and want some support with that. So Carl and I offer an online video module course Um And we teach all things logistical, practical, mechanical, lifestyle, and relationship tips for life on the road and how to really make it work for you because we want to help as many people as we can to experience all the benefits of this lifestyle that we are experiencing. So um, there's that. And then this is new, 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 like just out. Um, The second one is a special in-person event. And this is for those nomad curious folks who want to get a taste of nomadic culture and community and get a taste of the nomadic experience. Um, We're hosting a very special four-day in-person event this summer, uh, lakeside in the foothills of the Tennessee Smoky Mountains. And the website to learn all about that and claim one of the limited spots available for this event is nomadicadventureclub.com. So it's nomadicadventureclub.com. I am so excited for um, everything that you are creating to support others in living boundlessly. So I'm so grateful for our time together today. And so, um, I don't know, just always have loved spending time with you. So to have you on the show and get this message out there because there are many free spirits who are listening who are feeling stifled by their lives. And just this conversation, I'm sure, has got them thinking of the possibilities open to them. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Linda. You are such an awesome host and such a pioneer in this industry and getting the message out. And there's a reason you have such a big following. So thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your show. Uh, You're welcome. Well, everyone, I hope to see you every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time for the Inspired Conversation Show, where you will hear from extraordinary women like Tara, who are making an impact in the world with their sacred gifts. Until next time, choose love, choose joy, choose happiness, my friends. Blessings. Thanks for listening to Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy. Join our sacred space every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern and meet leading female visionaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. Inspired Conversations with Linda Joy is a soulful venue where guests share the obstacles they've overcome, along with wisdom and lessons learned on their personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic and soulful living.